I am cautiously excited, optimistic, yes, but excited for the new NASCAR game. And for the sake of this video, I'm making it easier. We're going to call it NASCAR 25. NASCAR 25 is the game, at least, that iRacing is creating. And hopefully, based on what a lot of us have been really wanting and have seen from the past, it is a better game. I do trust the people that are making it. I think that it's going to be a lot of people who may not have had the resources from motorsport games if they were there or from iRacing have resources that they can add to it. I think it's going to be a collaborative effort and I have been beaten down as both a creator but as well as just a consumer when it comes to old NASCAR games and that's where the cautious part comes in because I really do not want to gain my hopes up a ton just to be let down once more. But what I want to talk about today is sort of the communication that's been put forth and the fact that it seems like those that are working on the game, some at a very high level, both in just status as well as importance in the sport at large, I, I think the communication is actually a really good and indicative start to where they might be going, a good path that they're starting out. Steve Myers from iRacing had a tweet with Dale Earnhardt Jr. being in a production meeting. Calling him the old man, Jr. was in there with basically the higher-ups of the game and the decision makers. And while I don't think that Dale Jr. is going to be the one deciding, you know, what schemes go into what game and what ones can omit and every little minute detail like that, I do think that he's somebody that will have knowledge. He's someone that I think will have an image for maybe what he would want in the game itself. I think he is the best person NASCAR knowledge-wise to be involved with this. And of course, with him being at iRacing, that was going to be the case. I don't think anyone thought otherwise. But what I love about this is that Dale Earnhardt Jr., deeply cares for the sport and has both a knowledge of the gaming scene in NASCAR that combined is unlike any other. I mean, if you remember, Dale Jr. has been in the NASCAR gaming and sim racing scene since the 90s, since he was basically a kid growing up. And with that, he's going to know the ebbs and flows of what went right, what went wrong, and maybe bring approaches that are old school to both NASCAR and video games that others wouldn't have thought of and in turn may bring some options that are better for the player at large. iRacing doesn't really have to do this. They, they don't have anything really to gain by this except for maybe more status, but they basically have the best of the best right now when it comes to a gaming and sim kind of public domain basically that they've owned. And with that, I think that having Dale Jr. as an iRacing higher up involved I think it means that they're in good hands because I don't see him being involved or putting his name on something that is half-assed or just a bad product altogether on its own without a ton of effort and heart put into it. It might not end up being great, but you will be damn sure that they'll uncover every stone to see what they can figure out. And I think with the images that they have on screen, there's not really too much that you can dig in with it. I think a lot of it is concept at this point. But with that, I do think that at least content wise, you can see that they're going down every avenue. Some have pointed out that it looks like some iRacing stuff, which would make sense seeing how they're working on it. Others have pointed out that it might look a little bit like NASCAR Ignition, which again, as much as the gameplay sucked for that title, it was at least a very good looking game. And there were ideas there that could have worked. It's just when you have a company that was as ineptly run as motorsport games, you're just not going to make it happen. Now, Steve Myers the next day followed this up by saying, quote, I say this with love, but in the last 24 hours, the community has designed a NASCAR console game that, if attempted, will be released in 2047. And the thing about this is I like this response. And maybe I'm reading too much into it. Maybe I'm just trying to find the one kernel of hope I have after the last 20 years downfall of NASCAR gaming. But hear me out on this. There's three things I really like about it. One, communication. There is actual engagement from those making the game. 
not a live stream where they basically ignore the real questions and abruptly go away like they did with motorsport games. It at least feels like the fans' input is being valued here and they have read through it. I went through a lot of those comments. There were some really good options and basic things that need to be put in the game. But at the same time, there's people that are asking for dynamic weather as well as wheels flying off, driving on pit road, which actually might not be that much of an issue, as well as a ton of other unrealistic things for the first game that they will make. And I think with this, it means that the developers, and this is the second thing I like, are putting out realistic expectations. They're not promising the world on game number one. That's something that irked me about the Heat games and motorsport games is that they would promise all of this stuff and then they couldn't even put a damn track map in half the games. That to me is something that I really, really wanted to see, that they know they're not going to deliver us NASCAR Thunder 2004 in 2024. It's going to take time to build up. This game might be just a mediocre game. Of course, after the last decade or so, since I would say some of the good Eutechnics games, we really haven't had much better than mediocre. So you would basically be the best that we've had since the early 2010s. But that's something that I think needed to be said and done. That way fans aren't expecting the world because they think they've been promised it, when in fact they've instead been promised a silver platter of shitburger. Now, the third thing that I really like, though, is completely contradictory of what I just said, at least on face value, and that is that fans have high expectations. Now, that does not align perfectly with realistic expectations, but while the most lofty won't be met, there are standards the fan base is putting forth. I think that was the big problem with the Heat games as well as with Ignition, is that fans really didn't have a standard. You would hear the age-old line, pay for this one so they can spend that money to make the next one better. Or different lines like, well, it was better than the last one. And eventually it just led down the downward spiral of hell. And with that, I think that as long as both parties have a real raised bar, especially for each game, but can stay in the realm of realism, I think that both the game's in good hands and the fan base is in good hands. Do I think that'll happen? No, I think there's going to be misalignments at different points. But at a starting point, this is probably the best a NASCAR game has started out in public perception, probably since NASCAR 2011 the game, and that was only because of deceptive advertising. But with that, I want to pass this on to you. I want to know what your expectations are for the game. I'm expecting a competent, average to slightly good game. I want to know what you are expecting. So let me know down in the comments below. While you're at it, leave a like in this video, share this video, and subscribe to this channel for more great NASCAR content. Be sure to watch the NASCAR Weekly Podcast tonight on Danny B Talks channel. And until then, have a good one.